I'm CC Summers. Allegra just killed somebody, and it's okay because... Girl boss or go home, am I right? <laughs> okay, Allegra just killed this dude and then took off with his body to go feed the eldritch being. <laughs> and we're just kind of chilling at our house, like... Guess I'll just sit here. <laughs> Allegra leaves with the body in the early hours of the morning. I'm scared. What if someone sees us? I helped her. I touched the body. What if we're found out? I sit in her room, waiting for her return. She doesn't come back for hours, at which point I've imagined my arrest a hundred times. Yes. I took care of it. Okay. I can't bring myself to say much more. Won't we be caught? What's going to happen to us? I don't want to know what she did with the body, but I want to know if we're safe. Um, Allegra? Yeah. She's not going to tell me that she fed it to an eldritch being. Like, we know that she fed it to an eldritch being. But, like, we don't know that she fed it to an eldritch being. And she's not going to tell us. She's not going to be like, oh, well, coincidentally. <laughs> I feel like we know the answer to either of these questions. So I guess it's just a matter of which is going to piss her off less. What's going to happen to us? Fucking nothing. Because she got rid of it. What do you mean? What if someone finds out? Nothing's going to happen. I took care of it. You saw that coming. <laughs> but, <sighs> look, I went to someone I trust, relatively speaking. We'll be fine. He has our back. Does he? <laughs> Because the man doesn't care if we live or die. <laughs> Someone she trusts. What does that mean? What kind of relationship do they have? What is he... How will he... Oy. I don't ask questions. I don't want to know. Frankly, I don't like the guy. But you trust him. Yeah. I owe him a favor. So you gave him a body? I can't understand that at all. It's better if you don't know anything. It'll be fine, Cece. Go home and get some rest. How? How can I sleep with the thought of Allegra murdering someone replaying in my head? I go back home and roll around in my bed, unable to get comfortable. I can't believe this. What have I gotten myself into? I shouldn't have helped her. I should have called the police. We ain't no snitch. <laughs> but worst of all, I imagine myself in the man's position. If Allegra hadn't taken pity on me when I robbed her, would she have killed me like that man? Well, I mean, it depends. Are you going to threaten her life? Because it really seemed like he was going to kill us if we hadn't killed him first, so. Besides, it's our money. Girl boss or go home. I don't sleep at all that night. I kept thinking of that man's face, his expression as the blade sliced him open. It was horrible. Every time I shut my eyes, it's there. A blank stare, waiting. Something wrong? Are you all right? Peachy, dandy, fine, 100% crushing it. <laughs> huh? You're completely out of it. <laughs> Money problems again? <laughs> what else could you possibly be thinking of? Not the brutal murder and dismemberment of the man from yesterday. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> She smiles, so I can only assume that she's joking, but I can't bring myself to return the gesture. She drops the expression when I don't reciprocate with a laugh. Hmm. Your coffee's gone cold. Oh. I reach for my mug and take a sip. She's right, it's lost all comforting warmth. I thought she felt guilty about that man, but Allegra's completely back to normal now. It's as if nothing happened. How am I supposed to sit comfortably while knowing that? What do you want? What's wrong? I can't tell her how I really feel. She might lose it again. I struggle to form any words, weighing if it would be better to speak my mind or hold back. What if she tries to hurt me like that man? Oy. Go on, you can tell me. Can I really? 
Yeah, I mean, we're, we'll be we'll be we'll be vulnerable and honest. We tell her to be vulnerable and honest, so we'll do that. And then if we end up feeding an eldritch beast, well, lesson learned. <laughs> I'm still a little shaken up since that man was here. Oh. Whether it's frustration and guilt at remembering the incident or irritation about me bringing it up, I don't know. I've never been in a situation like that. Putting all of the guilt on Allegra would be a bad idea. I have to make something up. Some reason to be upset that doesn't involve name calling. It was scary. He pulled a knife on me and I was afraid he'd hurt you. Hmm. I see. I think I just avoided a very dangerous situation. Allegra is quick to anger, but the look on her face when she killed that man? It's not something I've ever seen before. There's no way a normal person would do something like that. Yeah, that's all we're concerned about. That guy was crazy. I'm so glad that we stabbed him in the neck and took him apart and threw him in an alleyway to be eaten. <laughs> There's a brief, uncomfortable silence. No. That's not the only thing that bothers you, is it? I'm not stupid. Yeah. Cece, are you afraid of me? No! 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 It has nothing to do with the fact that you asked me like that, with that look on your face. Yeah. It's obvious. You're holding something back. Just say it. Are you afraid of me? I mean, again, okay, honesty, vulnerability. I'm a little afraid of you because the, the fuck? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I... Oh, yeah. It's all my fault. I have a bad temper. I deserve that distress. It has nothing to do with the temper um, and more the actions that you take w w with that temper. I'm sorry. I know you're not like that all the time. I'll get you a fresh cup of coffee. She stands up and exits the room, leaving me to heavy silence and nothing but my thoughts for comfort. Am I afraid of her? Do I want to get away? It would be safer that way for sure. Allegra's temper has gone from invoking mild fright to dangerous terror. She re-enters as I'm mulling over these questions, weighing my next move. Uh, hey, Cece, I was wondering if you would tell me. She starts off strong, speaking with confidence, but her voice stumbles halfway through the sentence. I... What happened to your parents? You said that they were gone, but what did you mean by that? <sighs> you mentioned something about your stupidity a while back. Something about a wreck, maybe? Why? What are you... what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make it seem as if I'm just as bad as you? I don't know. But I'm... I'm gonna guess that I'm not. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I did say something like that. Well, I don't know. Did I run away? <laughs> because she's very obviously trying to relate, right? Like, I did something horrible. Maybe you did something horrible to make me feel better. And then we can just bond over how horrible we are. <laughs> so I guess it's just, do I lean into this? Or not. I feel like we would get a better ending if we leaned into it, right? It was all my fault. I was driving with them and we got into a wreck. No. That's not? It was my fault because I was driving. I wasn't paying attention. I was careless, like usual. We sit in silence for a few moments. It seems Allegra doesn't know what to say. I'm not sure how to continue, even if she wanted to know more. I... I see. I moved away and came to this city. I couldn't face anyone after what happened. Even though people were understanding and they were happy I was safe, it felt like I murdered them. No. You didn't. Uh, that guy from before? I murdered him. It's different than what happened to you. It was an accident, like you said. You didn't mean to hurt anyone. It's all my fault. I did. I wanted to hurt him. I wanted him to suffer. I was so angry that I couldn't control it. I don't know why I'm like this. Sometimes it's like I totally lose myself, like I'm watching myself from afar and screaming to stop it, but I can't. I'm sorry. You shouldn't feel bad. You didn't do anything wrong. 
Don't forget that, okay? Well, I mean, it kind of seems like that we did. Like, what do we mean by we were careless and we weren't paying attention? Were we just like dicking around on our phone and hit somebody or what happened? I know where she's coming from, I suppose. Sometimes I don't understand myself either. Why did I sit in my apartment alone? Why couldn't I just snap myself out of it? It feels like a monumental effort to look at people or let them look at my work. It's like I want to hide myself forever. A while back, Mama sent me to a special school for fashion design. She thought it would jumpstart my career, so my parents saved up tuition. I went for a few weeks, but the clothes I made still weren't any good. I felt like I was always catching up to everyone. Oy. Many of the students there were children of wealthy parents or parents who already made a name for themselves. In comparison to them, I was nobody. I was nothing. I was wasting my parents' money on something that would never work out. I... There were these two guys in particular. They liked to sabotage my work, destroy my designs, and steal my projects. They used to call me all sorts of names. I was afraid that if I walked home alone, they would follow me and do something. I got to thinking, maybe I really am useless. Maybe I'm worthless. Mama didn't like my work, and I wasn't any good at school either. I was probably better off dead. I dropped out of school and came back home. Things weren't really the same after that. Cece, what's wrong with me? Absolutely nothing. It, even the murdering thing, that it's, it is okay. Girl, boss, or go home. <laughs> Allegra, it's not... None of that is your fault. I struggle to comfort her. I feel for her and her difficult experiences, but it doesn't explain away what happened. Lately, there's the matter of that other guy. The one who's been calling me. Why don't you tell me about him? I... I don't know if I can. Uh... I think you would despise me if you knew what was going on, and I couldn't... I'm sorry. Cece, I really like you. I've been really happy since you started working with me. She reaches out and wraps her arm around me. I can feel her body shake as she cuddles my chest. It's all my fault. I know I'm a screw-up, but please forgive me somehow. Please. My mind is spinning, and I'm not sure what to think, much less say. How can I judge her when I know so little about her life? But then, she killed that man. How can I excuse something like that? She killed him. I mean, it's a good fucking point. At this point, we really know nothing about her. She's asking for an apology for her being... horrific. And we don't even know the half of it. We only know the one thing that happened. I'm surprised we are still here. <laughs> Alright, we sold a couple of this dress last week and another today. I'll have to mark the stock as running low and see if Allegra will sew anything. It's another quiet afternoon at the shop, and I've busied myself with work at the cashier's desk. I'm not avoiding Allegra, I tell myself, but rather giving myself time to think over everything that's happened. My eyes burn as I stare down at the paper. I'm still not sleeping well, and that situation doesn't seem to be improving. I had the terrible realization that even if I left Allegra, she could go to the police and frame me for the man's murder. She wouldn't do something like that out of revenge, would she? She might beat my ass, but not... Actually, I think she would kill me, just like that man. That's more likely. I feel that's the most likely course of action there. I swallow and try to push the thought from my mind. Allegra likes me well enough now, so everything is fine. The fuck out of my store. The door's chime, soft ring, breaks me from my thoughts, and I'm back in action. Hello, please take a look around and tell me if you need anything. Hey, hey! Oh, a new person! I love new people! Did you take over for Allegra? None of your fucking business, get the fuck out of my store! <laughs> That's her new cashier, you idiot. She told me she hired some help for the shop. Wow. Nice to know they're not completely incompetent. I expected no less of Allegra to have a sharp eye. Good choice. Thank you. I smile at the woman for the kind, albeit backhanded, compliment. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm Mateo, and this is Ophelia. We're friends of hers. What's your name? 
Allegra has never mentioned either of these people by name, but that doesn't mean much, seeing as she isn't exactly an open book. I'm Cece. Should I go get Allegra? She's in the back room. <laughs> I'll go get her. Without waiting for my reply, she strides behind the counter and into Allegra's workroom. I can hear her shrill voice all the way from the other room. Mateo looks embarrassed at her lack of discretion. Nice! Sorry for the noise. We didn't mean to interrupt the workday. Don't fucking apologize to me, you bitch. You don't, you don't give a shit. Fucking. Fuck you. <laughs> Ophelia drags Allegra out to the front of the store, beaming. Allegra looks irritated, possibly from her work being interrupted. Allegra! Look who I found! Allegra, you shouldn't stay cooped up in there. It's bad for your skin to drink all this coffee and work constantly. Yeah. What did you have to bring him for? Hijo de puta. Yes, exactly. Get fucked. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. I came to visit. Nobody wants you to visit. Ay, Dios mío. Like hell you did. What do you want? Hurry up and spit it out. I have work to do. <laughs> I don't think you want to speak to me like that. After all I've done for you bitches. <laughs> I hate him so much. I watch as Allegra's temper flares, stealing myself for yelling. Yeah, I'm not going to insert myself in this situation. I think it's better for me to just <laughs> quietly um, fade into the background in here. I don't know what they're talking about, and it seems inappropriate for me to try to mediate. I'll go to the back and make some coffee, Allegra. No. No, you can stay. It's fine. I don't want to. <laughs> Ophelia doesn't seem happy with this turn of events. Yeah. Let's keep it quick. Yep. Of course, I won't hold you up too late. Straight to business. <laughs> that fucking <laughs> stirring up trouble at work. That piece of trash you gave me owe the casino a lot of money. What? How was I supposed to know that? You've been bothering me for payment, so I gave it. What's the problem? You must think I'm stupid. The problem is that the bastard didn't have any money, and now we're short ten grand. Normally, I don't care about this pointless bullshit, but it's a pain in the ass to have these sniffing after me. Why didn't they just go to his place and take all of his shit? Like, they obviously know who he is, and he owes a lot of money, and he obviously didn't have it. What would they have done in this situation if he was alive? Like. Go do that! What do you want? What am I supposed to do about it? It's your problem. <laughs> it's your problem now. Give me another body. How about your friend here? I'll let you do the honors. What? Excuse me? I wasn't talking to you, dumb shit. Shut your hole or I'll glue it together. Glue your fucking hole together. God. Ugh. Ugh. My mouth snaps shut as I stare in horror. Is this the guy who took care of that man's corpse? I thought Allegra didn't want anything to do with him. Here he is, claiming to be friends with her. What the hell is going on? He wants to kill me? <gasps> no way. Fuck you. You can't order me around to do some shit like that. Ophelia. What is this? Are you actually going to take this shit? Um... I gave him what he asked for on my end, Allegra. It's only fair that you have to help, too. Hang in there. It'll be over soon. It's only fair, Allegra. Give me your friend. I'll make it quick. We'll use them as a scapegoat. Yay. No. Cece is important to me. You can't fucking waltz in here and- Allegra! But you have me, Allegra. You don't need them, right? <laughs> Besides, you were gonna kill them anyway. What matter now that a little time has passed? You were gonna what now? What? Kill me? Ophelia. It doesn't work like that. Cece hasn't done anything to hurt anyone. That's the promise we made. We promised we wouldn't hurt anyone unless they hurt someone else. Remember? Yeah. You're right, I suppose. Ophelia shrinks at Allegra's rationalization. It's all I can do to follow the conversation, much less swallow the content. Thank God she's seeing reason. Now it's only Mateo we have to worry about. Yeah, that's not as much of a comfort as you're thinking it is. <laughs> 
What a load of fucking garbage. You make me want to vomit. What? Are you in love with Cece? Suddenly, Ophelia looks much more intrigued by the conversation, and any thought of agreement with Allegra is gone. What? Yeah, do you love them? You can't run away. Doesn't matter if you do, because they'll betray you either way. Why can't you remember that? Yeah, but if Mateo loves loves somebody, they're fucking untouchable. Don't you can't do shit. Cece wouldn't do that. <laughs> I don't see how that would show that I'm betraying her. Be because that's against my will. Good job, Mateo. As usual, your logic, flawless. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'll kick your ass. I'll kick your ass too. Stay away from me. <laughs> fuck yeah. Gross. Gross, Mateo. Who said you could do something like that? What? Fine. Fuck all of you. Allegra, if you don't fix this in two days, I'll use you and Cece as scapegoats. Yeah. I understand. Well, I didn't know he was going to say something like that. Um, Are you mad at me? No. Not really. He tied our hands, so there's little else we can do beside appease him. Uh, he does whatever he likes, doesn't he? So tacky. What are you going to do about the debt? Oy. I'll think of something. Something that doesn't involve me dying, I hope. <laughs> something wrong? Do you really think I would do something like that to you? Ophelia admitted that Allegra wanted to do it a long while ago, but changed her mind. I don't think she would hurt me now. No, I trust you. Ophelia clears her throat, interrupting us. She's jealous, isn't she? She doesn't seem to like me very much. Not since Allegra entered the room. Lucy! I have to go. Lucien will be looking for me, and Lord knows I don't need another meltdown to add to my day. I'll see you later, Allegra. She doesn't offer any parting words to me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for you to find out like that. I was trying to keep things a secret from you. To be honest, I still don't understand everything. That's for the best. If you knew everything that's happened, I think you would hate me. I consider her words for what they're worth. Hasn't this only proven that Allegra was protecting me after all? If I was supposed to be killed, that man was my replacement. It isn't a pretty thought, but considering the circumstances, I'm grateful. I wouldn't hate you, Allegra. I can appreciate that you're protecting me from... something. <laughs> Allegra's voice falls below a whisper, almost so soft that I don't hear. I'm trying. I know better than to interrupt Allegra during her work, but I want to know what she plans to do about Mateo's request. For the last day, Allegra has been working on something. She won't talk and holds herself up in the back room. I shouldn't worry, but time presses on, and I feel like she's ignoring the problem. In addition to that, I'm afraid she's not taking good care of herself. She looks disheveled, and there are dark circles under her eyes. Has she been sleeping? She's grumpier than usual. I would be too, things being as they are. Neither of us want to be murdered, so something has to be done. I stand at the door of the back room, waiting for a moment to speak up. She hasn't said anything, even though I've been watching her for several minutes. Allegra? Allegra doesn't look up from her work, instead responding with a non-committal grunt. I walk closer to her. It looks like she's busy working on a bag of sorts. Allegra? Her head snaps up as she glares at me. What do you want? What? Don't you see I'm busy? Yes, but- Go away. I can't chat. Ophelia. Ophelia plopped a commission on me last night. She's very particular about her wardrobe. <sighs> it has to be stylish. It has to hold makeup supplies. It has to be perfect. And it has to be finished soon. She looks terrible. And, as usual, she's throwing her frustrations into work. Then letting them boil. Allegra, I'm worried about you. I won't bring up the most glaring problem yet. First, the matter of her health. Have you had any water recently? <laughs> Have you been drinking water? 
It's important to stay well hydrated. I'll get you a glass. <clears throat> Fuck off, Cece. Drinking water isn't going to finish this project. I have to keep working. Allegra, please listen to me. We need to talk. She doesn't mean anything that she's saying, and I know it. We have to talk about Mateo eventually. I mean, just because she doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's okay that she's saying it. Go away. No, I don't want to hear it. Go back to the front. I flinch. Even if I'm used to her harsh tone, and even if I know why she's upset, it's no less hurtful when she snaps at me. I'm sorry, Allegra. I'll leave you alone for now. But we need to face this eventually. Yeah. Fine. Later. <laughs> at the worst possible time, Allegra's phone vibrates. When she looks at the number, her expression darkens. She answers it with an enraged shout. What? I already know that! <gasps> I'm trying! Fuck you! Yeah. I got it. <sighs> Fine. I mean, if that was Mateo, then I understand, because he does that to people. It's the only acceptable way to talk to him, really. <laughs> she hangs up the phone in a huff. Oy. Fucking hell. Um, what was that about? <gasps> what do you think? Probably Mateo. Yeah. You're probably right. Her tone is mocking, echoing my words back in a sing-song voice. Allegra, we need to talk about what we're going to do about him. I know it isn't easy, but we have to think of something. As I talk her down, the color in her cheeks lightens up with shame. I'm sorry. As usual, I take my frustrations out on you. And as usual, it's not okay. <laughs> it's okay. I understand what's going on now. It's not okay. I do understand what's going on. It's still not okay. <laughs> it makes perfect sense why you're so upset. But it doesn't make sense why you're taking it out on me. It's not my fucking fault. Uh, I don't want to do this. You know that, right? The people he works for are dangerous. I'm scared of him and what he could possibly do if I cross him. You mentioned organized crime earlier. Is he part of a mafia? Yes. I didn't care what he would do to me before, but now that you're here... I mean, is he really part of the mafia, though? Like... <laughs> The whole getting the bodies thing has fucking nothing to do with the Mafia. Cutting my legs off and throwing me into a dumpster to rot. Nothing to do with the Mafia. <laughs> Her words trail off. A regular occurrence when we talk about something uncomfortable. I know just how to urge her on. Now that I'm here, you worry about me? Yes. At first I thought I could use you, but I realize that you're a good person. And I like you a lot. I like you too. You're a kind person. I misunderstood you. Listen, someone can have trauma and still be an asshole. Those two things can be true together. <laughs> she moves towards me and takes my hand, tracing the palm with her finger. I'm okay. I'll figure something out to save us, Cece. I'm the one who dragged you into it. You're too precious to... Maybe Ophelia will have an idea. Fucking kill in the mood right there. <laughs> Allegra swallows and bites her lip. Maybe. I try not to worry. I try not to think about Mateo's words. Two days. Allegra tasks me with washing the front window of the store as it's grown dingy. I work in sections, washing away the dust with an old rag. In several minutes, a fourth of the window washed, a woman enters the store. Who are you? I'll be with you in just a second. She doesn't respond and walks over to one of the racks to rifle through the clothes. I continue washing the window, mindful of the woman in the store. She picks out a few items and piles them in her arms. A white blouse, navy pleated skirt, and another white blouse with longer sleeves. Do you want to try those on? Again, the woman doesn't respond and keeps rifling through the racks. Maybe she's distracted about something. I walk over to the woman. Is this the one we're gonna kill? She looks like she's gonna try to rob me. <laughs> Excuse me, do you need help? This time, when she doesn't respond, I tap her on the shoulder. She jumps and covers her chest in surprise. Sorry. The woman gives me a sheepish smile with her apology. Do you need help? The woman pauses and then shakes her head. No thanks. 
Okay, I'll be at the window if you need anything. Just call for me. Can you say that again? Oh, is she deaf? She squints her eyes as if trying to riddle something out. If you need anything, just call for me. Okay. The woman pauses again, watching me. Her face is impassive, the nervous smile long since dropped. I can't tell if she's annoyed with my interruption. Kinda weird. Back at the window, I finish my work. Allegra should be pleased with the sparkling glass. As a final touch, I adjust the clothes on a mannequin and go back to the register. The woman is still shopping, but I'm unsure if I should interrupt her. She didn't seem very enthusiastic about my questions before. It might be best not to hover. The steady beat of Allegra's sewing machine trickles into the rest of the shop. The woman approaches the counter with her items. Did you find everything you need? Yes, thank you. All right, quick and to the point. I scan her items and fold them up one by one. The woman reaches into her bag to retrieve a wallet. Or a gun! These are really pretty. They'll look great on you. I'll add one of Allegra's business cards to your bag, and you can come have your clothes tailored if you like. Did you hear me? I reach over and wave, one of my eyebrows raised in confusion. Oh! I'm sorry, I'm deaf. I figured, yeah. She glances quickly at the floor and bites her lip. The revelation hits me, and I suddenly feel very stupid. I probably should have realized sooner. Wait, but she speaks? A lot of deaf people can speak. <laughs> the question is out of my mouth before I can stop it. I thought deaf people just signed. Can you say that again? I'm bad at lip reading. Uh, never mind. The woman's mouth settles into a line. I can see that I've irritated her, but I don't know how to properly apologize. I quickly fold and bag her items, eager to end the awkward exchange. The woman leaves the shop without further incident. Good job. Nice work today. Quiet as usual? About the same. Hmm. And you finish washing the windows. Good. How about we go out for coffee? Who's buying? <laughs> we'll go Dutch. As Allegra and I enter the cafe, I notice a woman sitting alone at a table. Upon closer inspection, it's the same woman who came to the shop earlier. I wouldn't want to be rude. I'll wave hello. The woman has a notebook open before her. The pages are covered with stacks of lines and dots. Sheet music? I moved into her line of sight and waved my hand. The woman glances up at my gesture and takes a moment for her eyes to glimmer with recognition. <sighs> Who's that? A customer. She came to the store earlier. I point to the bag sitting in the seat beside the woman. Yes. Oh, thanks for shopping with us. I hope you enjoy the items you picked out. The woman smiles nervously. She's not very happy about somebody who just bought clothes from her store. <laughs> uh, she's deaf, and she can't lip read. Mm. I can't sign. Can you? No. The woman's eyes dart between us, and I watch as her smile grows more and more strained. Sorry. I address her again, and the woman nods. She holds out her hand, signaling for us to wait, and then pulls out a pad of paper and pen. She writes, I don't usually talk this way, but I guess there's no other choice. Allegra reads over the paper and nods, writing back in cursive script. Cece was telling me how they knew you. I'm Allegra, the owner of the boutique. <laughs> I hope you like your purchase. I do. This time, I take the pen. What's your name? Eden. Nice to meet you. The woman draws a smiley face with her next response. Nice to meet you, too. Sorry if I made you uncomfortable in the store. At this, she pauses, considering her response. The pen hovers above the paper for several moments. It's okay. I'm used to it by now. You just get used to it. Allegra reads the paper alongside me and shakes her head. Yeah. Nice going, Cece. Do you want to scare away my customers? Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. I didn't do it on purpose. Eden squints at her side conversation. I snap back to attention. She can't read lips, and I suppose it's rude to talk like this in front of her. Allegra likes to make fun of my customer service skills. This brings a smile back to Eden's face, this time with a soft laugh. I see. Don't worry, you did fine. Nothing to pick on you about. It's okay. Allegra is all bark and no bite. Not, not necessarily true. <laughs> oh, really? 
The woman laughs at our banter, finally comfortable with our conversation. I'm going to get another coffee. Be right back. Allegra takes the pen. Do you mind company? I'd love it. Eden slides back in her chair and goes over to the cashier to place an order. With her back turned, Allegra leans closer to me. Hmm. She's the answer to our problem. No, she's so nice. No, Allegra, no. No. You don't mean... Yes. Mateo, yeah. What if someone comes looking for her? Yeah. We're strangers. No one knows us. Besides, we're just delivering her. I don't want to do anything I don't have to. Get it? No, 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 no. She's too nice. And what did you say? You don't kill people that haven't hurt other people. And she hasn't hurt anybody as far as we know. Yeah, I get it. I understand, but I can't help but feel bad for the woman. If we can even lure her away. Shit. The woman returns to our table with another cup of coffee. I glance over at Allegra, wondering if she'll go through with this. Do we have a choice? What are we supposed to do? Mateo will kill us, won't he? Not her! There's so many people! Allegra picks up the pen and paper. Hmm. I've never seen you here before. Are you a regular? I'm new in town. I bite my lip, knowing what Allegra is probably thinking. No one to look for her. No one will miss her. Again, you don't know that. Just because she's new to this town doesn't mean she doesn't have family, like, or friends that she's regularly in contact with. Yeah. Probably lonely, huh? A little. I usually keep to myself, though. In that case, maybe you'd be interested in going out with us this afternoon? We're going to meet up with a friend. You should come with us. It'll be fun. No! 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 She's so nice! Is it okay? I won't be intruding? Allegra looks over at me. The pen sits between us. I pick it up and force a smile. It'll be fun. No, it won't. I don't... I don't like that I was not given a choice in this. <laughs> Something wrong? No! Yes, something is wrong. Something is very wrong. We're almost there. With her back to Eden and I, there's no possibility that Eden might have read her lips. Still, she stops and taps my shoulder. Where are we? We're on our way to see our friend. I'm deaf, not blind. Allegra turns around, her face impassive. Hmm. We'll be there soon. Eden's eyes dart between us. As the world darkens around us, she pulls back. Something isn't right about this place, and she can feel it. Her voice drops to a murmur. Maybe I should... Hey, hey! What's up? Good to see you so soon. You got your act together quick, didn't you? Do you have something for me? And glad to see that you took my warning seriously. What piece of trash do you have for me? Not, not a piece of trash at all. She shouldn't be accepted. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. This woman... What's going on? Her voice rises in alarm as she turns to run away. Grab her, Cece. No, you grab her, Mateo. Or Allegra. Either of you. I don't... Do you want to live? This is not fair. <laughs> grab her. I jerk at her, shouting. It's as if my arm moves on its own. Let me go. I'm sorry. That's it! <laughs> Give her to me. What? I wrench Eden out of my grasp and over to Mateo, trying to block out her protests. We have to save ourselves. We have to. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have no idea if she understands what I've said. I can't linger on it. <sighs> we have to go, Cece. Leave her. I... The woman's eyes flick wildly between all of us. I can't help but pity her. I know she has no idea what's about to happen. She can't even hear us. What? Not eager to watch? <sighs> Mateo pulls a machete from a belt loop on his back. I don't want to imagine what he has in store for this woman. Finally, the woman's eyes widen in recognition. Fuck off. You're sick. 
Eden lets out a sob as Mateo drags her back, still grinning. You must think I'm stupid. I'll expect another delivery soon, Allegra. This isn't enough. Not nearly enough. Go away. I don't have... I did as you asked. Leave us alone. I need a scapegoat, not some trash off the street. It'll be over soon. I'll give you another day, but that's all. It wasn't even worth it. God damn it, Allegra. <laughs> Fuck. Allegra grabs my hand and pulls me from the alley. Still, I heard the scream of the woman and the splatter of blood on the ground. I close my eyes, but her expression is carved into my head. Again and again, thunk, thunk, thunk. I'm so sorry. We need another person? What are we going to do? I can't... I can't do this again. I'll take care of it. You're goddamn right you're gonna take care of it. <laughs> i like, girl, what the actual fuck, dude? <laughs> I wanted no part of this. Um, I did not, I did not want to take that woman to the alleyway. Like, we knew the rules. She knew the rules. She knew the fucking rules. It has to be somebody that hurt somebody else. And this woman was so fucking sweet. <laughs> she did not deserve to be dragged into that fucking alleyway. And there we were. Dragging her. That's a fucking take out Allegra's kneecaps and leave her ass there. Ugh. My opinion of her has drastically changed. Don't, don't get in cars with strangers or leave with strangers or go anywhere with strangers. And I will see you later.